This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome to this week's edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Bad Bronze, Cajun meat, Boudin Cajun meat, Don Duck. You know, Crockin, sometimes they have it for me. You want me to close <laughs> it up? Cause yeah, you better I, get it I, out of here. I've been doing it. <laughs> also, welcome to hurricane season. Yep, came yeah. a little bit uh, earlier than expected this week. Right. We it's not a hurricane, not even a depression or a tropical storm yet. Just a system at this point might develop into something a little All bit right. worse. I didn't call it a hurricane. I just said, welcome to hurricane season. Okay. So if June the 1st, don't be corrected. But so when we get to the fishing report, probably there might be some caution in the fishing report. But uh, there was a lot of fish caught this week. We had a lot of things going on. Don, you were... We, I covered a, a special rodeo at, at, at Sweetwater. You, were the you sound MC. nervous talking about it. You know, just tell well, me. It's, it's Rick's be Rodeo, cap. sponsored by Rick's Cabaret and Pugley Sporting Goods. It was a great event, well organized, mm -hmm. well run. A lot of good fish came in. It, it was a, a tough thing. It was a little unique. It was a little different, but that's A little that's bit okay. different. And it hit the and went for a good cause. Wish yeah. the fish won our big. Well, I got to tell you, they had a great volunteer staff that came down there to help get it get it all run too. They were a lot prettier than some of the ones we watched. Oh well. And uh, very good workers though. No, oh, yeah. I'm gonna tell you what they started. Uh, I also got you know to see Jack. I haven't done anything down with Jack. Jack Payne, Captain Jack Payne, has been one of the most easygoing, most helpful marinas anywhere. Absolutely. Story after story after story of Jack going out and getting boats. He started again then. They had people in the bachelor party, boat broke down. He loaned him his boat. Told him where to go. I mean, he's unmatched when it comes to that. You have to come great interview with him for, for radio. I wish I would have got it, but I'm, I'll be going back next week for the Tito. I'm going to be doing more with Jack. He's just been so busy. There's a lot of fish being caught in Delacroix area, in the redfish. In this tournament, we're getting ready to show you the kayakers whipped all the bay boats. But they did. Because that shallow water, that's the thing thing reports I've been hearing from Venice. You know, the redfish going crazy, toe feel in them. So we got a lot of new, got a lot of fishing news, a lot of events that came on. And Don, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving something out. I don't I know what enough. you're leaving out. A really big story. We talk about the seriousness of hurricane season. This Rosso Cane issue that has come up is really scary stuff. And we got to go down there. Chris Lecoq went with us. In fact, a lot of media went down to Venice. And they gave us a tour to see down near the mouth of the river the devastation and destruction that this mealy worm is causing to the Rosso Cane and the fallout that could result from it if they can't come up with a way to stop it good discussion on it, you'll learn a lot about it, and also how you might help stop that spread of it. We also got the Flambeau Outdoor News segment, some good news if you're a red snapper fisherman in the state of Louisiana or any of the other Gulf Coast states, we'll tell you about that extension that was passed, also the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report, and our H&H &H Tournament and Rodeo lineup, all coming up on Paradise, Louisiana. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolo's.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Watch Paradise, Louisiana.
The CCA Louisiana Star Tournament is doubling down this year. Double the tag redfish. Twice the trucks. Over half a million dollars of prizes awarded in more than 20 categories. Open to all ages, inshore and offshore, youth enter free. Don't let your chance to win swim away. Register at CCASTAR.com or at any Academy Sports and Outdoors. Louisianians know the importance of our state's coast, from the coastal towns and communities that support residents and tourism, to the burgeoning petrochemical industry, from the millions of birds, waterfowl and fish that thrive in its rivers, bayous and marshes, to the plants that blossom in its rich silted soil, from the tiniest of microorganisms to the 2,000 ton oil tankers, our state's coast is a complex working system, a regional gumbo, and our home. But there is a new threat. This new threat cannot be detected by radar, was not caused by catastrophe, and is not created by man. Rather, a small insect known as Phragmites scale is infesting thousands of acres of roseau cane, the dominant vegetation in the Mississippi River Delta. Back in the fall of 2016, Mr. Earl Armstrong and uh, Trevor Victoriano, one of our technician supervisors that work in the field, started noticing cane dying off in, in, in rapid numbers, rapid amounts over vast areas. And they kind of brought it to our attention and said, hey, you need to get down there. We need to take a look at this. We got a serious issue. So when we got down there, we started investigating it. We knew we had a problem, but we couldn't identify what the problem is. They found an insect. They found something on the cane, but it was to identify it. And so finally, this past March, we've identified that problem. And we're working with LSU uh, to, to monitor the program, monitor the scale, its development, its spread, and to find solutions. The Phragmites scale, more commonly known as Roseau cane mealybug, is believed to have originated from China and Japan, an area of the world where Roseau is harvested for use in many industrial and agricultural applications. But here along our coast, the Roseau cane is an integral part of keeping the Louisiana coast intact. Unlike some marsh vegetation, Roseau cane is one of the most erosion resistant marsh plants. It assists in building land by trapping Mississippi River sediment. It serves as habitat for birds and fish. It can grow in salt and freshwater environments, and it serves as the first main buffer for our inland communities from tropical storm surges. I mean, so this is uh, certainly a, a new uh, threat to coastal restoration and coastal protection, something we've got to keep a close eye on and something that we're certainly very interested in supporting, uh, getting the answers that we need to ensure that we can uh, get ahead of this, hopefully, um, and uh, stem the tide if indeed it is the issue that's affecting the cane now. It's a potential to be a, a really big deal on, on a number of fronts, both from the restoration and protection side in terms of our coastal wetlands, coastal ecology, but also from an agricultural standpoint. Rosso cane also provides much protection to coastal marsh oil platforms and pipelines. Rosso cane is a vegetation that's very hardy, very robust, and it really helps slow down coastal erosion. Because it's so woody and has a nice root base, it protects the marsh. And a lot of these marshes are around this oil and gas infrastructure, such as pipelines and wells and platforms. And these platforms and wells in the marsh are designed uh, to be built in wetlands and protected by roseau cane. So as we lose that roseau cane, when we lose it, all that infrastructure is going to be exposed to the Gulf and to wave energies of the Gulf. But in recent years, an obvious problem is occurring in the growth of roseau cane and is believed to be due to the manifestation of the roseau cane mealybug. The most evident area of impact is in the lower Plaquemines Parish area near the mouth of the Mississippi River, where in less than a year, believe that over 100,000 acres of Rosso has been affected by the scale. Biologists are alarmed at the severity of the scale's impact and are working to find ways to stop its spread. We're on the Delta National Wildlife Refuge, which is north of the, the State Wildlife Management Area of Pasaluke. Um, we're, in a, we're in a small, probably five, six acre, which once was two years ago at this time, a healthy thick stand of Rosso cane, which is now Starting to revert to open water, you have very sparse vegetation with roseau cane. 
We're getting some Sagittaria, which is bull tongue or Delta duck potato growing in. Um, we suspect that the scale is, is probably the, the main driver to pushing, setting this area back. What this island looked like in 2015, and that's in, uh, that's in January. And we'll flip forward to November of 2016. You see it starting to open up on this end here. And this is just last week, how much it's opened up. So here we have this scale, it's native from China, I uh, have it seen also in Japan, and here we just found it in Plaquemines Parish. Okay. So what you can see here is will be a large female, as you can see measures almost half an inch, and it's actually um, a mature female. This, as, as you start going up, you have more infestation, so what we notice it happens is, here these females will start producing eggs, and then the nymphs, the babies, will start crawling and moving to the next segment of the stem and colonizing it. And then it keeps moving uh, to the upper parts of the plant. So by the end of the growing season, think about uh, October or November, you have all these uh, scales covering this plant. So that may be one of the factors why this plant is dying. Over time, these scales will be depleting the energy of Russell. The Rosso cane mealybug is a very new threat to our coast, which brings a lot of questions on how it can be controlled and eliminated. What we're trying to do, we have a plan to, it's definitely a plan that is, work, work, is going to work in phases. So the phase one is to understand uh, right now, what is the distribution of the scale, um, what is the impact that it's having in different locations, but at the same time we want to understand whether we can use different varieties of Rosso as a potential restoration. Something really interesting that occurs in Plaquemines Parish is that there are four varieties of Rosso present in this area, and maybe they have some variation in the level of resistance. As our state's biologists work to combat this rapid spreading threat, there are ways that we can help assist in stopping the spread of the Rosso cane mealybug. First, here is how you identify areas that have been affected. Next, make sure you take precautions to stop the spread of the scale by thoroughly washing your boat before you travel away from marinas and make sure not to move cane from one area to another. So the role of the public at this point is really try very hard not to spread this stuff. There, um, we, we were asking boaters to wash down their boats at the marinas before they leave in order to keep from spreading it. That's the biggest thing the public can do. We have a lot of questions we can't answer at this time and we're learning as fast as we can how to combat this. But right now, to be aware, of what's going on and just really help us in not spreading this bug. A lot of the things that, that threaten the system, this coastal marshes down here are, are beyond individual control, but this is one issue where we as, as individual duck hunters and recreationists in general can play an important role. And the key message that duck, Ducks Unlimited and a lot of the other folks here would want to send to, to people using this marsh, especially duck hunters, is, is don't move the rozo. Uh, and you can look at it and, and you, you may think it's healthy and not infected, but, uh, but, but beneath the, the leaves that the, this invasive pest may actually be there. So any movement of Rozo out of this area or even from one area to the other in this locale uh, is, is potentially bad news for the, for the larger system. So the key message is don't move the Rozo. We know. Biologists believe that the Mississippi River Delta is the main area of concern at this time but are also surveying other areas across the state's coast to determine if the scales are infesting beyond Plaquemines Parish. So there's a multi-plan strategy including mapping uh, of the vegetation. We have a strong component of the education. We want to let them know the public that how we can prevent the spread of the scale. The issue of a uh, host plant resistance, that will be the project about biarities. And finally, some of the uh, whether we can use insecticides in a limited areas. So those kind of the four objectives of the um, research plan that we have. If you believe there are areas near you that may have been affected by the Rosso cane mealybug, it's important that you contact the LSU Ag Center or Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries.
Together, we can ensure that our state's coast thrives for future generations. Blake Edwards, and, and you're watching, watching Paradise, Paradise, Louisiana. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Welcome to the H&H &H Tournament and Rodeo Report. Gary, we go with the youngsters first. Uh, congratulations to the Junior Southwest Bassmasters out of Denham Springs. Uh, they fished up on Lake Concordia on Lakeview Lodge. They had some really nice fish came in. The winners in the 15 to 18 year old age group. First place went to Hanson Cheney of Walker, 22.91. That was a total of nine bass. Uh, then we had in the 11 to 14 year age group. First place went to Trace Day of Denham. 23.09 and in the seven to ten year olds uh, first place Caden Sellers Denham Springs 3.98 that was three fish big bass Caden Sellers 1.51 adult division first place John Cheney of Walker 28.52 and that's a 10 bass stringer and the qualifiers now move on to Kentucky Lake in Paris Tennessee and we want to wish them a lot of luck going on oh, yeah. great There's organization some good young fishermen coming up there yeah I wouldn't have mentioned about Trace you know if you remember that name here Trace Trace has won more boats at the store <laughs> at the end of the at the giveaway in October mm -hmm. Trace Day is amazing now he's fishing these bear tournaments go Go guys, do a Thank the bros too for what they do. Don, we, we, we got another one coming up there. Anything outdoors, frog. Mm -hmm. They got a frogging tournament coming up. They've been promoting it. Uh, it's gonna benefit the St. Jude in Memphis and also our Lady Lake Children's Hospital. Uh, dreams come true. They work with a lot of organizations. Uh, they got applications you can get. Go to their website uh, where your kids can join at $50. I think right. for 20 frogs, way in. You bring in 20 uh, frogs. That's this coming weekend. That's though. a lot of fun in doing that. Yeah, look it up at their website, get more information. Web, man. Anything outdoors. Uh, Don, we, we got a, a, had an eagle claw, the ALBC, who puts on that big one, District mm -hmm. 6, the youth tournament. It was at La Fania Park. They sent us some pictures of a kid. They had 75 youth show up. They raised. $2,200 Not bad. for a children's hospital. So, and then, and then again, the benefit and these, all these tournaments that have been coming up have been benefit programs that benefit other kids. So and that's what makes it so good. Uh, out in the West, you know, you're on a new station out there in, in, in Lake Charles. Mm -hmm. I listened to you. Yeah, 99.5, the Gator. Nice uh, big country did. station. Glad to have those aboard on the 64th radio 64th annual. I bury a riding gun club. It'll be at Quintana Landing right. and Sycamore Point, July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of July. So right before the 4th of July, that's where to be that weekend before. So Tito Vodka, one of our Redfish series, one mm -hmm. of our sponsors have been pushing, promoting it. We'll be back at Sweetwater this weekend. I will be there Friday for sure and part of the day Saturday. Try to get out in a boat and go see what he's got. I'll look for fishing. some big stringers of redfish to come out of that turn. Right in that Delacroix Reggio area, I've got some big 27 You, you, saw, you saw what I'm saying. A lot of them yeah. didn't make it. They were trying to get on 27. Right. But what's good about Tito, they can go to 28. Right. They got that eye when it changed the whole flex of the ball does. game. And these, these guys, that morning while we were there and you were doing it, it Saturday, there was a, I saw a lot of these boats, the Tito fishermen. I talked to some of them. Mm -hmm. They were putting in scouting for next week. It's looking pretty good right now. They got a lot of fish out there. I mean, we've been scouting a couple weeks now. 
fish a lot of mixed up, but we're still trying to find that right school of the eight pounders and then the upper slots. We want them in the 10 pound range. It's hard, they mixed up right now. I mean, you go in one spot, catch a few. Uh, the game's definitely different now. There's a lot of competition and uh, you can't back off for you know one second. Uh, otherwise, you'll fall to the back of the pack. So it's a tough competition for sure. Oh, it, it's a whole different ball game. I mean, this when we the first tournament we fished, we had three fish that were 27 inches and they were all eight and a half pounds and we thought we had good weights and we didn't. The Creole Classic, you've been knowing more about that, been for years. Yeah. Bridgeside Marina on June 22nd to the 24th, this coming weekend. Dedicated this weekend to Captain Bobby Terrebonne, who you saw this, and his family, and it benefits his family. So, uh, Don, that's it. All right, well, let's take you down to Rick's Cabaret and Puglia Sporting Goods sponsors of the first ever Rick's Rodeo held out of Sweetwater Marina in Delacroix Island. Paradise, Louisiana. I'm going to tell you right now, we're down here at Rick's Cabaret fishing in the Sweetwater Marina. And right now, while the speckled trout is only two and a half pounds, I think it'll get knocked out before this is over. The real cool story is that the redfish category is not dominated by $70,000 bay boats. It's dominated by the Bayou Coast Kayak Club and redfish. And that's just, these guys are paddling and catching these fish individually. This is the table of the first, second, and third place guys. You can take your camera and look over here at these guys. These are the guys that are catching fish that you're driving past when you get in your boat and head on out to your favorite hot spot. These, when you put that kayak in the water, what's your mindset? What's happening in your head as far as, all right, now what do I do? Well, we're getting into some of those ponds that those boats can't get into. You know, we're finding fish, half their backs out the water, and uh, I mean, you just can't get a boat in there. So the kayak, you have an advantage. Is it, is it truly the shallow water advantage that, that, that helps? Definitely, definitely. So we were talking about how we're presenting in shallow water. My go-to bait is a five-odd Gamagatsu hook, fishing with a crawfish with a small split shot sinker on it, about 1 16th to 1 8th ounce, and I can run it right over the grass, drag it on the mud, and the redfish just suck it in and crush it. What's really interesting is what you're hearing is that these guys are talking about getting in shallow, shallow water with kayaks, places where nobody else can get, but the redfish are still there. The crazy thing is you actually can be in water so shallow that you see the backs of those fish. They, the redfish are marauders. They'll go anywhere. And the crazy part is good, solid tournament red can be found in water you would never believe. They'll come out of that grass almost, almost like camouflage, just boom, pop out. So never underestimate where you might catch that next fish. My name is Kalen Johnson. I'm from Thibodeau, Louisiana. I fish today in Delacro, Louisiana, and I launch right here at Sweetwater uh, Marina. I went about two miles out, two and a half miles out to uh, my first fishing area. Uh, the water was pretty, pretty dingy and, and kind of murky due to the wind, um, but still had some pretty good action today. Uh, I finished with a little bit over 21 pounds, so hopefully I had enough to stay in third place. My name's Tyler, I'm part of the Men of Leisure kayak fishing team for uh, the Ricks and Puglius tournament. Um, we fished out of the Reggio area today. Um, a little bit of everything from spoons to top water. Um, I used a Daiwa Coastal uh, 200 today. Um, it was a little rough, couldn't really sight fish. Most fish were ca uh, caught blind casting. Hey, I'm Richie Majors with Bayou Delight. Stay tuned for more Paradise, Louisiana.
guys, Jason Bland and R.J. Tanner, one of our great military veterans, Trinity Outdoors and Team Murphy and Hope Outdoors, coming to you live over here up in Slidell, Louisiana. We want to thank big time Lake Catherine Island Marina. Miss Angie Stewart and her husband has taken care of us tremendously, and we got to give a shout out to this great group of people. You guys come check them out over here, Lake Catherine Island Marina. Paradise, Louisiana, guys. Y'all keep on watching. Stay tuned. As members of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we've all got a job to do. And the more we work together, the more we save. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. And welcome to our Paradise, Louisiana. We're at Bergeron's Boudin and Cajun Meats and Restaurant in Port Allen. Gary, Trinity Outdoors. Been working with those guys for a lot of years. Jason yeah, Bland and that What wonderful work they do and they were at it again. You know, and Jason's amazing too. He's been going through a lot of health issues himself. He almost cut him in half when he had work on his back. It was there, it took him to recovery, but he don't ever stop. He keeps going. And by the way, they survive with sponsors also. So a lot of people come in there and they with the slowdown, but he ain't letting them hold it down. Uh, I introduced him to Miss Angie Stewart over mm -hmm. there at the Island Marina, right there at Lake Catherine. And she took it over from there. She called, she said, I, I handle it. You tell them soldiers, and they, they stayed at my camp. Jason and them handled it. They said, Miss Angie, cook for them, had ball crab for them. Miss Angie and her husband, they just, they took it over. And uh, Jason is singing their praises, and, and they caught fish. They would tell them the guides were coming in and telling them where to go catch fish. On one or two places, they didn't catch it. Jason video, this is not us, this is them. It's Trinity Outdoors, fishing out of Island Marina on Lake Catherine. Hey guys, we're on our first day, our second fishing trip this afternoon. This morning we did great, caught some sheephead. What else we caught, RJ? Yeah, we got a couple big reds, big red drum. A couple day. specks, huh? Yeah. But we threw a couple specks back, caught them on uh, the south end of Lake Bourne, and uh, tried out a bunch of different places, but uh, didn't have any luck in other places. All well canals, not all well, all rigs is what they call it. Anyway guys, you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Baby speckled trout. A sea monster. Catching a lot of good little speckled trout here. Just having a good time. Now tell us about your military career. Uh, I did three years in the United States Army. I was stationed in Fort Riley, Kansas. A combat engineer. Uh, in 2010, in October, we were supposed to be deploying to Iraq and it was found that I had shattered my ankle, was forced to have surgery to reconstruct my ankle and was barred from deployment. So therefore, eventually it led to being discharged? Yes. Well, uh, look, brother, we just want to tell you thank you for coming on this trip with us, and you've been a blessing, I know, in my life. In the Bible studies, you reached out to us, and just welcome to the family, brother. Hey, I appreciate it. This trip's been a blessing to me as well. Hey guys, Jason Bland with Trinity Outdoors. This week we got four days of fishing. We are over here at Lake Catherine Marina, out the Slidell area by the Wrigley's and Lake Catherine, Lake Bourne area. And we want to thank Paradise, Louisiana for allowing us to go ahead and use their camp and stuff. Mr. Gary Responi, around, you know we love you. Anyway, we got nine veterans out of here this week and we're just 
being able to bless them in the outdoors like we always do. And it's truly a blessing to get out on the water. Y'all stay tuned. You're watching Paradise Louisiana, yes. Mike. I served in 3rd Ranger Battalion out of Fort Benning, Georgia, and 10th Mountain Division out of New York. Well, we appreciate your service, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, we catch your reds over here. Tell and us what specs. you got. Specs and reds. Specs and reds. It's a hybrid. Tell them where you from, brother. South Mississippi, 601 area code. What's your name? My name is Randall Jones, and I'm catching red fish. In Team, Louisiana. Team Murphy? Team Murphy Outdoors, day 101. Yeah, baby! Woo -hoo. That's not even a hook. That is a double, triple lasso. Look at that. You lasso the I fish. I lasso the fish. That's how we do it. <laughs> Hold his mouth here. Mississippi two fish. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this weekend we had three groups that joined up this together. Not this weekend, but this week. I this lost week. track of time. We had three groups joined together: Hope Outdoors, Trinity Outdoors, and also Team Murphy. We came together. We have seven wounded veterans that served our country for the freedom that we have, and we want to tell them thank you. Y'all go ahead and y'all stay tuned because you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. I'm John Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana fish fry. My new favorite, the Cajun fish fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry. You watching Paradise, Louisiana. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change has been keeping cars and trucks in Baton Rouge clean and running smooth for over 50 years. At Benny's, we feature professional car washing, complete detailing, high-tech waxing and buffing, interior cleaning, and tire shine. Benny's, one stop for car maintenance with complete oil and lube services and even state inspections at our express location. Visit one of our five convenient locations, including our newest store on Greenwell Springs Road. And don't forget to stop by Be Quick Convenience Store and Fuel Stop. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Drive in dirty, drive out clean. Welcome to the Flambeau Outdoor News segment on Paradise, Louisiana. And Gary, some of the biggest, best news if you're an offshore red snapper fisherman. 39 days extension for the recreational private fishermen, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's open now on the weekends, uh, goes on in towards Labor Day. Now the holidays are also going to be accepted too and they're going to let you get out and catch those fish. Still two fish per person and a 16 inch minimum. 
but lots of more activity. And there was certainly a long cry from the three-day, but not where we want to be yet. But there's still the, the workings in place to try to get us an, an extended season for Red Snapper. And it's going to help, too, with a lot of the rodeos and tournaments coming up. So Red Snapper Division should be open. Uh, if you see our fish report this week, you can see a lot of snappers still coming in. We get, are getting pictures of kids catching this first snapper and everybody else, so he's doing good. Down with shrimp season, I, I just got that bulletin in yep. this morning. The wildlife and fish are closing the inshore. Mm -hmm. Shrimp season will be at 6 p.m. Friday, uh, and we close for all over the inshore. On June the 23rd, shrimp season will be closed to further notice. All right, and the star update. Uh, got some big speckled trout coming in. We got the overall leader caught out in the west, but it's the overall leader for the state around 8.5. Uh, Daniel Compagno fishing out of Hopedale. And normally Hopedale doesn't produce the leading fish on the Seven. eastern division, yeah. but it was 6.7 pounds, caught it right there by the Hopedale Rock Dam in the Mr. Go. So a good catch there. You say what bait? Uh, probably fishing live bait. I'm not sure, but we'll have to Well, check now my add to the news is also in the fish report. Tommy Vidrine caught one Sunday. Six something uh, is in second place in Star and Grand Isle. All right, so the Stars got some really good speckled trout competition this year. Also, want to remind you, fishing licenses they do expire at the end of this month, June 30th. If you buy one now, it is good from now through June 30th of next year. So don't get caught without your fishing license. Make sure you get it. You can get them online at Wildlife and Fisheries website. Uh, you can also get them at your favorite sporting goods store through that method too. So that became available, by the way, June first, because I was at the wildlife fishers meeting, and and uh, I finally got mine. But I tried to go before, and they said, no, you you got to wait to after June first, that last month. So. And don't forget to get that Star Rodeo ticket too, because you might be the one to catch that tag redfish swimming around. All right, we'll be right back with the Berkeley Abu Garcia fishing report on Paradise, Louisiana. The CCA Louisiana Star Tournament is doubling down this year. Double the tag redfish. Twice the trucks. Over half a million dollars of prizes awarded in more than 20 categories. Open to all ages, inshore and offshore, youth enter free. Don't let your chance to win swim away. Register at CCAStar.com or at any Academy Sports and Outdoors. Uh, we're about to pick up old Captain Ty Hibbs off the bank, go chase some reds. How are we looking up there? That's the rocks. A rocky? Yeah. Be quick in the reverse, turn your motor up. You good right there. I'm going to push it on. I made a perfect cast on this fish, and what you want to do is be able to place that lure as quietly as you can right on the fish's nose when you see them. Right now we're using a 17 pound matrix line. That's what we switch to when we're red fishing. And as long as that red's under 
six pounds or so, you just flip them on in. It's pretty tough line. It's a real good monofilament for this style of fishing. Oh, another nice red. Got him on the 5 16 black platinum again. He's in that UV. Matrix shed, solid 20 inch fish. Now I'm gonna show you what we're doing here. We're just getting up high on this platform. What's up? That way we can see into the water and these fish are just cruising these rocks. It's a little bit difficult right now because we, we're dealing with a lot of clouds. You can see these big storms in the background. We really like it when we have a lot of sun makes it easier to see, but this water is so clean with the southeast wind. It's been protected. It's the leeward shoreline, and we can see really good these redfish just rubbing their bellies over these rocks. So we're going to get back at it, try to catch a few fish. Until next time, good fishing. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolo's.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Welcome to the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. Gary, starting off offshore, uh, depending on this weather situation with this system that may be moving in, that may make access out in the Gulf more difficult. But by the weekend, when the snapper season reopens, it should be good. If you're headed out there, you can catch your limit of snapper fairly quickly. With the exception of triggerfish and amberjack, which is closed, there's still a lot of other species you can catch out there, lemonfish. You can catch the tuna, the mai mai when the rips move in close. And don't forget the wahoo. We're picking up some pretty good information on wahoo. Same right. fish. It's a seaweed. It's a playing fall. around with that thing. But it's seaweed pool. Nope. All right, you rock. Pounds, I guess. Just dragging bait, so hit on the dock, and uh, the third one today. So we're just gonna keep wrapping around the rig. Bait, it's a good fight, real good fight. Pull hard. It's always got to give some CPR to our our uh, fishermen, but he, he survived. He's good. Not only that, the people are going way out fishing tuna, 
Tuna have been biting a few of them in Clinton. I got some pitches coming in, and, and the, the, somebody took a, somebody else's fish, so I don't have their name, but uh, they were coming in in Grand Isle. People that are they're running from there. People coming in in Venice right now, they still they got a lot of tuna coming in. The snapper, you can dodge these bad things. They also, mangrove making a comeback. Yep. You, most people, when they're fishing these mangroves, they're having a hard time getting down to them because of snapper. Catch you two, they're moving around. They've been sending some pictures of some mangrove snap also. Well, and the saltwater report, the saltwater reports, you got to kind of watch them because we're taping this early in the week, depending on what that system does. If it goes east of us, if it goes west of us, if it comes right up into the Gulf, uh, that could certainly influence the reports. But, you know, as of last reports, the beaches in Grand Isle probably continue to be some of the best speckled trout fishing anywhere in the state. Big right? fish. Big, big, fish. big speckled trout. Best fish. bait. I just tell you, Tommy Vidrine and his daughter Emily Collar. Look at this table full of fish. They all caught them on, on pogies. Now, you do know he goes to the bedside and he'll get a croaker or whatever, mm -hmm. and those big shrimp, they freeline him. When the weather's just right, they get on them rocks, they get on them barges, and they run them rocks. People talking about rocks. You know, there's a lot of rocks over there towards Sand Dollar, too. So that big trout I showed you came from Barataria, mm -hmm. that area. And, and so... Use of the places you got to fish, not just Kamenata rocks or the other ones. Uh, I was telling you about Bruce Dodd. He had him and Zachary Domain fishing pogies again. They've been killing them over there on pogies. They're finding their pogies around the Coast Guard station, you know, drawing that net. Some of them in the bay right there in, in Kamenata. Uh, John Sheremy is another one that's been fishing with them. Pogies. Pogies is a big fish bait. Always has been. Tournament fishing, freelining it, letting it float, all of a sudden it's taken, it's gone. Uh, Cocodre, by the way, I'm getting them in. Dwayne Chapman from up north, they were spending some time down in Cocodre. Live shrimp under caught. Travis Chapman, Ethan Powell, and them boys, mm -hmm. they were all fishing. Catch up. I'm getting more and more reports on topwater fish from Cocodre, too. Don, I showed you that picture somebody sent me. Texas is a monster. Yeah. They say it was 35 inches long, and they were guessing they was about 12 pounds, but they'll say it looks bigger than that. You can tell by the guy's fingers and everything, it's still a monster fit at 35 inches. Usually here, seven to eight, nine pounds, about 28 to under 30, but when you five inches longer than that, and the belly on this fish is unbelievable, uh, I'm gonna let these up to you. You talk to Jack, I'm gonna leave the feet up, toe field and them. Trout sort of cut back, but they and it's been rough out there offshore. I mean, with the plane, but they have been catching redfish in Salvador and ever. They're catching redfish everywhere. Dupont. Well, that Breton Island chain, uh, there were some really good catches that were going up, and then all of a sudden, uh, the wind shift and brought a lot of that river water around and kind of shut that area down temporarily. Now, where this system goes. Who knows, it may continue to do that or it might move it in another direction and get real good again down there. Uh, the thing about fishing down there right now is you just got to watch for that good clean water, look for birds diving. It's a long run to make. Now, he goes by plane, but if you're going by boat, it's a long run and there's not a whole lot of backup back there. But still on the top waters, you can catch the speckled trout down that way. Uh, as far as moving over towards where the Sweet Sweetwater Marina, where Ricks was held last week, it, you can't find a better place to catch a combination of redfish and bass. You know, you're fishing along the edges of that grass with a number of baits. Uh, Jeff Brule came by and he stopped by doing a radio broadcast and at 6 o'clock he went out and a few minutes later we had a picture. He had a bass and a red, which again gets really to be a good report for the kayakers because you don't have to go very far. Once you put your kayak in right there at Sweetwater Marina, you're fishing in about two minutes. You can fish your way out of there. <laughs> I was listening there. to Don on the radio. And he was talking about all the boats coming in. And as I was driving down to Delacro, I seen some people putting in. People were fishing the Jesuit rodeo. No, we didn't mention the Jesuit rodeo. People think we prejudice. We are. We are. I'm going to tell you that. Right now. Everybody want to know. He's a rumble. I'm a redemptive Catholic high and all that. But we are a little prejudiced against Jesuit. Just joking. No, they a great school, great team, great athlete. But... They had their rodeo going, and guys were in kayaks mm -hmm. fishing in Delacro, and they were putting in. I got some little video. I pulled off the side of the road, 
And uh, I had your coffee, by the way, uh, and, and I even brought you a biscuit. You don't, you don't do like that. <laughs> well, it's I hard do. to I talk can... on the radio and eat a big biscuit at the same time. Right, I do that. Yeah, yeah I, I know you do that, time. but I can't handle that. He can't tell the difference, though. <laughs> I'm not as articulate as you. That's true. That's true. Yeah, good thing, huh? Uh, yeah. What about more fishing? Where else would well, you send people? We well, need to I move the fresh water you. now. We saw it about the bass in Delacro. Uh, the good news is Mississippi River is falling. It's falling pretty fast, so hopefully. We'll get some that clean, means clear the water. That means the falling too. Exactly. Uh, it's going to jump up, but, but even before it starts falling, no, I'm getting reports from Henderson, and I uh, I rode the other day across the, the Interstate 10, headed toward Lafayette, mm -hmm. and uh, I kept seeing these boats at the landing, and I didn't get no reports, but then I started getting some reports getting in. My friends uh, that are down at Grand Isle, that one people from Lafayette, saying they hearing them back up against the levee, against mm -hmm. the wood. Uh, the Brobridge boys have been telling me, get ready, but they're all down in Grand Isle catching fish. They sending me box shots. Don't send me no box shots. Send me somebody in the picture. He sent me some of them. So uh, remind me, I hope I, I, to remind people about on a box shot, if you send it along with the picture, you know, and it's a really good box yeah, shot, sure. you got, you got to stack, you know, we'll include it, but don't do that. But Toledo Bend is coming in fresh water right now, Toledo Bend. Uh, Logan Warren, uh, Ed Terry, he, he done another guide over there. They fish in the Pendleton Marine uh, Bridge. They fish in uh, Shinas and 25 foot of water in the treetops. They got a beautiful fish. We'll go back to Lauren Warren. Uh, I'm sure to show them I'm getting a lot more fishing reports from Toledo Bend right now. They're another one affected by this high wind, but don't do it. Lake de Zalmas, been getting, you've been getting reports, I've been getting reports about Sackalay right now. Sebastian Spurlock, his friend's in him. It's the first trip he loaded up on brim and catfish. Our friend, Mark Nava. Yeah. He gave away a secret, by the way. Yeah, you saw he, that. His guide was caught in the picture. Now we know how he's finding those fish. I he's got getting a handful secret of crickets. Secret with he, Bill. Uh -huh, uh, picture, uh -huh. We got the picture of that bird eating a fish, bringing it to him. Yeah. So I don't know whether he, he tried to say he giving the bird for locating the fish, the fish. Look how his bird might be catching the fish. And that ain't illegal, huh? To yeah. use a bird? Is it, is it method to catch fish? I don't know. That, Maybe that's, one, get that's one. We got to get a ruling on that. I don't know how enforcement that, division. If uh, a bird, a bird don't need a license. Everybody talks about feeding, feeding the birds and looking for the birds when you're fishing. This is different. But I saw those cricket boxes. He's been catching yeah. on cricket. Yeah. I wonder if he's taking those crickets and feeding it to the bird, and then let him go get a fish. I think you're overthinking this whole thing. I think you're, you're thinking too much on it. Maybe this. it's taking too long, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the pond fishing right now is also real good. The different people are talking about ponds. Nicholas Farbaka. Yeah, I got his, his Ken people he's fishing with his papa, Mr. Joel Gotro. The big fish, three and a half, and they had a bunch of bass they caught fishing ponds in Milton, Louisiana. So, Don, that's all I all got. All right, now you know what this Sunday is, right? National Catfish Day. And that's not Hardhead Day. So if you're going after the catfish on National Catfish Day, you want the freshwater catfish. So we can go all kinds of ways, and people are catching catfish everywhere. That's right. It's a good From time. Lake Barrette, off the river's going down. Now, if you're going to fish off of these batches in the lake and these pits, be real careful yeah. now. Especially you know, if you got kids. Let me tell you what. If you got kids and animals, these alligators right now have been up in there, and they they coming out. Hungry, they, they've been back in the woods. They, they, I've seen them dead on the side of the road right there on, on the interstate 10 mm -hmm. coming from New Orleans the other day. I saw an alligator dead on the road right there before you get to the North Shore. I saw them alligators on 90 going toward uh, Raceland. So, yeah, be watch for alligators, watch for snakes definitely, but you can catch a lot of fish. Just be careful, the currents are different. So. All right. Be sure to send us your reports of where you catch them, what you catch them on, include your picture, and Gary learned how to do it with the cell phone, right? Horizontal shot with your cell phone that fits better our screen be much, on much TV, better. Better horizontal, but make sure the light's in the right in the people's face. Right. And get your license renewed before you go. We'll see you next week with another edition of 
Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.